The airbrush is slowly become a very popular tool between miniature painters. It allows you to speed up your painting and get your army done quickly, but it can be really frustrating to learn. So today I'm gonna share with you the absolute basic to start airbrushing, cutting down the fluff to the essential, and hopefully sharing with you some tips and tricks that you might not know. And if I do it, you must certainly can too. To start airbrushing, you will need, well, an airbrush, and then you'll need a compressor, mask, cleaning tools, cleaning pot, and also optional a holder. If you don't want to swear each time you realize you don't know where the fuck to put your airbrush when you have to do something else, you know? And you might also need some flow aid or flow improver. I highly suggest you pick up a gravity airbrush with a two action trigger. Gravity driven means that the paint is being pushed out by the air and it's being constricted down from the gravity to the cup to the main body of the airbrush. Is that clear? Uh, I don't think you need to know the physics. Just roll with it. Oh yeah. And two action means that you can actually control the amount of air that comes out as well as the quantity of paint, as you can see in the video now. There are very, very cheap alternatives and very, very pricey one. I'd suggest you stay in the middle ground of sorts and you go for like an evolution or infinity or something like that. That's what I'd like to use. Not so fancy, it's so expensive, I'm gonna die, but not as cheap as like Michael Pizarski do. And you have to throw it away after a couple of times. Crazy, right? The airbrush is made up by many, many parts, but these are the only parts that you need to care about. The first part is the nozzle. I would suggest you get a 1.5 or 2 millimeter nozzle because you really don't want to work uh, with a very small hole, to be honest, at least at the beginning, because at the beginning you won't be able to work on fine details anyway, so with a small hole like that you'll end up having a lot of clogging issues and you don't want to have that, right? The second part part is the head. In this airbrush part it's important that your trimming is cleaned and not ruined because if it is it won't seal properly and you will have uh, air flowing backwards causing bubbles. At least I think it's because of that. The needle which is gonna be the same size of the nozzle and of course you have to be really careful not to bend it or ruin it especially in the point so don't pick your teeth with it. And let's not forget about the trigger, because sometimes this part is gonna need a little bit of lubrication to work properly. So if you feel like it, it's a little bit stuck, you just put some olive oil in it. You don't need any fancy lubrification. Okay, so now you have all your tools prepared and ready. So much info, hey? But what do you have to know? Really? I would say three things. The first one is air pressure and dilution. The only really important characteristic your compressor needs to have for you to use the airbrush properly is pressure control. As you can see from screen, you have two measures, force and PSI. Just look at PSI because, because I say so. Okay. I usually keep my pressure at 20 psi, but let me explain how dilution interacts with pressure first. Understanding consistency might be quite hard at the beginning. What it was said to me uh, was to always look for a consistency similar to milk. And let me tell you, that's a f stupid advice. Different pressures call for different dilution. If you lower your psi, you're gonna need more thinned out paint. And the higher the psi, the more thick the paint can be, but not thick like thick you know there are two phenomena phenomena phenomenon phenomena that will make you aware that you have the wrong consistency and these are a spackling when you have too thick consistency or too low pressure or spider webbing when you have too thin or too high pressure but alice these are shitty advice you basically not saying what we need to know god damn it yeah okay okay Figure it out for yourself then. No, just joking. Truth is, I haven't figured out a rule for this yet, and I can only share what I know. For me, you can easily do either, and it doesn't change much. Number two is training the trigger finger. Like I said in my beginner skills video, with every new activity, you introduce a new motor skill that you have to learn and interject in order to manage it properly. In the context of airbrushing, the motor skills will be mainly two, the trigger finger and aiming. First, you'll have to learn 
how to manage the quantity of hair by pressing the trigger, and then how much pain to shoot out by pulling the trigger back. Also remember to pull the trigger all the way back before stop releasing hair, because otherwise the paint will clog in the nozzle. Like I said, aiming is another thing that you will need to learn in order to swap airbrush properly. Possibly it's something that you will need later on when you are more comfortable with the airbrush itself. Cool trick I learned from a friend of mine is to put a finger near the part you want to aim at and shoot some air there. And then you will just and shoot out paint in the required area. You can test this on a piece of paper while you're also training the trigger finger to release less or more paint. The thickness of the line or the dot you will create will be larger the more pulled back the trigger is, as well as how close the airbrush is to the surface. But just be careful with that because the closer you get, the harder it's gonna be not to create speckling or spider webbing. Oh yeah. So like we said, aiming, finding the right distance, pressing down and pulling back. How hard can this be? Piece of cake. And number three is cleaning. The more fancy your tool is, the more attention and care it's gonna need in the cleaning process. For every color change, the process is pretty easy. Different people have different methods, but what I personally do is to put a bit of cleaner in a cup and then spray it out in my airbrush cup. Test it on a kitchen towel if the color is gone completely. At the end of the old session, your hairbrush will need a good clean, preferably by the Attaching the various parts like the nozzle, head, needle, blah 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 blah. Most airbrush problem can be solved with a thorough cleaning. But that's a topic for another video, so subscribe, I guess.